In this video, we are going to be talking about ethanol, the alcohol that is present in alcoholic drinks. Ethanol's formula is CH3CH2OH. It is, as its name implies, a two carbon alcohol. When we consume ethanol in alcoholic beverages, it gets absorbed from our stomach and also from our small intestine into the bloodstream. And then the blood transports the alcohol, the ethanol, to target organs. The alcohol goes um, to our brain where it has an effect on our coordination, our mood, memories, if we consume a lot of it, and just our general thought process. Also, some alcohol goes to our lungs and a little bit of the alcohol is evaporated from our blood out through the lungs, which does cause people to have that alcohol smell on their breath even when they're not actively drinking. Uh, some alcohol ends up in our skin, in the blood vessels underneath our skin, and uh, as we know, alcohol ends up in our kidneys and um, in our liver, which is where most alcohol gets metabolized. In the metabolism of ethanol, the ethanol is converted first to a molecule called acetaldehyde. This is an oxidation reaction of the alcohol, a primary alcohol. This uh, process is done with the help of an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase, ADH. So it helps to convert the ethanol alcohol into this aldehyde molecule. The acid aldehyde molecule is then further oxidized with aldehyde dehydrogenase, another enzyme, and that creates a carboxylic acid, which we know is just the general pathway of oxidation of a primary alcohol. The acid aldehyde molecule that is produced in the first step of this metabolism is the actual substance that contributes to hangover. And so a accumulation, a large buildup of this acetaldehyde molecule is what causes us to feel the effects of a hangover. There are other effects associated with the feeling of a hangover as well, such as dehydration, irritation in our stomach from consuming alcohol, and we do get an inflammatory response associated with consuming a large amount of alcohol. But in general, the, the accumulation of the acetaldehyde causes the typical hangover feelings. One of the medications that is used to treat alcoholism is called antabuse. This is a medication that actually inhibits the second step of the oxidation of alcohol. So when you consume ethanol, it is 100% converted to acetaldehyde and the acetaldehyde cannot be further cannot be further converted into the carboxylic acid. Um, because of this, there's just a significant hangover effect associated with the consumption of alcohol because again, it's all being converted to acetaldehyde and none of the acetaldehyde is being converted to acetate. This is a way of kind of roundabout treating alcoholism. Of course, it, it the drug itself doesn't directly treat alcoholism, but causing significantly negative effects associated with drinking um, sometimes can help up person change their, you know, their tendency to consume alcohol. Methanol poisoning is something that you may have heard of. It is something that is, you have a potential for methanol poisoning if you're consuming alcohol that has been made at home in the home distillation process. Methanol is a byproduct of fermentation. So if somebody is making hard alcohol um, like whiskey or vodka or something like that through a fermentation process at home, there is potential that you could end up having methanol poisoning. However, home distillation rarely produces toxic amount of methanol. That said, I do know two people who have received methanol poisoning from consuming homemade alcohol. Um, so it's not super uncommon and definitely something that you want to be worried about. Denatured alcohol, if you ever see a bottle that is labeled denatured alcohol, um, and this is something that we use in the lab, Denatured alcohol is alcohol that has been poisoned with methanol, rendering it not drinkable. And this makes it possible for labs to purchase and use alcohols without having to worry about any kind of liquor licensing. The me metabolism of methanol um, is interesting. The Methanol and ethanol molecules both use the exact same enzyme for their metabolism. So the alcohol dehydrogenase that's used by ethanol to make acid aldehyde is also used by methanol to make an aldehyde as well. However, the aldehyde that's formed in the metabolism of methanol is formaldehyde, which is extremely toxic. Like it's very, very toxic. It causes blindness, it causes coma, and it can in large quantities cause death. So this is why methanol is such a dangerous substance. If a person consumes methanol 
accidentally, or if there's worry that you may have consumed methanol, there's a couple of options that can be used medically. Um, one is a medication that actually inhibits the enzymes, ADH and ALDH, the alcohol dehydrogenase and the alcohol aldehyde dehydrogenase. It inhibits these enzymes, which means that it basically slows down the conversion process. And this allows the body to help, um, you know, not get a large amount of formaldehyde all at once, just smaller quantities of formaldehyde, which our body then can kind of handle um, ridding them and not having a large accumulation of them all at once. So one treatment, again, is just to use an enzyme inhibitor that just ser seriously slows this process down so that you don't get a large amount of formaldehyde accumulating all at once. The other option, which is, you know is not so fancy, is to just consume a lot of ethanol. The enzymes, alcohol dehydrogenase uh, and also aldehyde dehydrogenase, they have a favor for reacting with ethanol as opposed to methanol. So if your body has both ethanol and methanol in its system, the enzymes will prefer to metabolize the ethanol into the aldehyde and they will not choose to metabolize the methanol into the formaldehyde. So consuming a large quantity of ethanol um, just kind of leaves the methanol unmetabolized in your body, which means that it's not being converted into formaldehyde, and formaldehyde is really the toxic substance. This uh, gives your body an opportunity to rid the methanol as methanol rather than having it convert itself into formaldehyde.